Hi, this is Steve Spence, KK4HFJ, out of Andrew, South Carolina. And tonight I've got my laptop computer connected to my VV898 radio. In a previous uh, blog posting, I talked about how to program the radio from the front panel. And tonight we've got the cable connected from the microphone jack on the radio to the USB port on the laptop. So we got it plugged right here into the laptop. And we've downloaded the Chirp software from chirp.danplanet.com. And you have to install the daily build because the stable release doesn't have support for the VV398 or 898 radio yet. So I've downloaded the, uh, the the latest daily build, and I've installed it. And I put together just a quick list of instructions here on how to get in. But basically, you just install the Chirp software. Uh, if you get a message that the software may have not installed properly, you just override it and click the button and tell it that it did. Uh, then you want to plug your USB cable into the computer, like I said. And you're going to wait for a few minutes for the prolific driver to install and it can take three or four minutes for it to find the driver and install it, but you shouldn't have to do anything other than just plug it in and it'll tell you, hey, I installed on COM28 or whatever your local COM port might be. Um, then you're going to run the Chirp program, and I've got that running here, and you're going to click on the radio option, and you're going to say download from radio. And when you do that, it's going to come up and it's going to ask you for the COM port. In this case, it was COM28, the vendor, and the model number of the radio. And you just click OK. And you'll get this message saying cloning from radio. And you'll hear a nice little tone, tone chirp on the radio when it's done cloning. And when it's finished, it's going to pop up with this spreadsheet that you see in the background of your existing radio settings. And what you can do is then you can go in and you can click on a memory location, put in the frequency of the repeater, give it a name, give it the, the most of the, yeah, there you go, I don't know if you heard the tone, but it chirped and said that it was done downloading. Um, you're going to give it the, the, um, the, the tone and the, and the frequency that you're going to be using. So here's your frequency here, and here's your tone that you're going to be using. Um, you'll see other settings on here. There's a 6 kilohertz offset. Um, of course, it's FM. You can change it whether it's high power or low power. But those are the, the, the important ones are the frequency um, and, and the tone um, that the repeater uses to allow traffic through. When you're done making your changes, you come back up to radio and you say upload to radio. And again, it's going to ask you for the port number. It's already going to know the vendor and the model number of the radio. It's going to be pre-filled out for you. And you click OK. And it's going to say cloning to radio. And it's going to re-upload those settings. And when it's done, you'll again hear the little tone on the radio chirp and say that it's uh, dee -dee -dee, all finished. And that'll happen in just a couple of seconds here. and the radio resets with your new settings that you've programmed in. So you can either program from the front panel like we talked about in the previous uh, post or you can use software like this and it's a whole lot easier to put in the um, frequencies that you want um, to, to make the changes instead of going through all the menu choices on the front of the radio. But I still recommend that you know how to, to uh, use the front panel and if you read the previous blog post at arduinotronics.blogspot.com, that will go through the manual settings from the front uh, panel of the radio itself. So this is Steve Spence with arduinotronics.blogspot.com, and uh, we're doing this little uh, video, and uh, I hope that there's enough information here. We will be posting additional details on what we do with this radio, how we use it, um, any software issues that we run into but as you can see you can download you can make changes um, just by clicking on a field like you would in a spreadsheet and just fill out the information that you want in there 
we got our repeater information off the website uh, for the PALSNET um, repeater and we're hitting the Greeleyville repeater that you're hearing on the radio right now that's, to that's uh, kicking in and out and they give the frequency and the encode tone um, so you would just put in for the information for your local repeater and there was the uh, in the previous blog post that I talked about how we uh, went through and did the manual changes from the from the radio but if you have any questions just drop us a line uh, my email is greentrust at gmail.com and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have um, it's a great little radio we've been having a lot of fun with it and um, it is dark out here but so we're trying to the best we can to make a video but uh, like I said, if you got any questions, just drop me an email. Check out our website at arduinotronics.blogspot.com. And pick up one of these radios. They're like $130 at radiodity.com, R-A-D-I-O-D-D-I-T-Y.com. And they're just an absolutely fantastic radio for 2-meter and 70-centimeter bands. Thank you very much. Steve Spence, KK4HFJ, out.